So, raising a gopher, you need to know how much they weigh so you know how much you feed them every single day and what they like to eat. Just kidding. So, um, a little bit of background. I majored in electrical engineering at Georgia Tech, and then I switched over. I worked at Intel afterward doing product development engineering, so pre and post silicon digital circuit debug, basically no software at all. But I wanted to do some software, so within Intel, I switched to a group that was working on Intel Snap, which is an open source telemetry framework written in Go. And there was a lot of Go that I had learned. I didn't know any of it before at all. And then I'm working with Docker right now, and then um, I'm also one of the organizers of the Docker Portland meetup. And then in my spare time, um, I'm trying to learn French. Uh, J'apprends le français. <laughs> and oh, I also like doodling sometimes. We didn't have a mascot for Snap, so the first turtle was my revision of drawing the turtle. And you can see it's a cute little one afterward. <laughs> um, so who are you? Uh, you've heard about Go. Um, you're interested in learning the language. Perhaps you've just started know nothing about Go. Maybe you've been doing it for a little bit, or maybe you want to teach someone else how to learn Go. So why learn Go? So Go used to be in this place that was previously occupied by Node.js, and before that, Ruby, Python. In other words, it was bleeding edge, hipstery, and dare I say niche. But it's graduated from that, and it's applicable for many uses now. Um, it's adapted for concurrent I.O. It's readable, it's fast, it compiles into single binaries, and it's great for microservices and distributed systems. Uh, a lot of companies are using it now, like Google's using it for Kubernetes, Docker is using it for Docker, Intel Snap, et cetera. So this is the outline of my talk. Um, I'm gonna tell you where to begin, which is where I started, and I feel a lot of other people start as well. And then some more websites after that, some of the tools that you can use to help make it easier for you to learn to go. Um, different types of training, online training, in-person training, workshops, uh, different places that you can get coding practice because though you are studying it, you actually need to code to practice to get better at it. Um, some of the different communities because communities are a big part of, the, of being in Go. It's not just all about coding. Maybe for some people it is, but there's a great community with it as well. And then there's also conferences. So where to begin? So the place that I began, and I feel many other people do, is the Tour of Go. So, sorry, there we go. So Tour of Go. Uh, it starts from the very beginning, and then it goes to a lot more advanced concepts. It gives an explanation of what it does on the left side, and on the right, you have some code. There's examples. For this one, it's a for loop, so then you can just go and be like, hey, run it. And then if you want to add other print statements, edit the code, you can do that. So yeah, there's different topics. There's a bunch of examples, and then afterwards, they'll have exercises. They'll be like, how do you co code this thing? This is expected output. You can code it, and then you can match it to see if you're doing it correctly. And then it's also available in many languages, and you can get it offline as well. So then another thing is GoDocs. So you have your tour of Go, but you want to know, hey, how do I code this? Or what does this package do? I don't know anything about it. Or there's a package, there's a bunch of functions, which one do I want to use? So um, this is the GoDoc. This is for Foomt. Uh, you have a different functions, such as Printlin. And it'll give you an explanation of what the code does and a little description of what the code is. So the, there's, if you want to know more about it, you can go to the blog, and then you can also get this offline. So say you have, you're on a plane, you can use the Tor of Go and the GoDocs, or you're in the middle of the forest in some cabin. You can still code. You don't need to have it on the internet. So then there's also the source code. So if you are over at the GoDoc and you're like, hey, I want to know exactly what is happening in this function. It tells you what it does, but you want to actually see how it works. So you can easily just click on it, and it'll jump you directly to the source code for that specific function. And you can also look on GitHub and look at the source code there. So some other websites, because a lot of times people are like, hey, here's the tour of Go, here's the source code. That's all you need, have fun. But uh, for me, I, that's where I started. They're like, do those things. And then I would spend hours on the internet. How do I do this? How do I do that? Obviously, it's good to spend time Googling things, but it's a lot easier if somebody tells you at least a few places to start instead of, oh, wow, this website is so not useful. I should have done something else. 
So um, first one that I came across is uh, go by example. So this one has a bunch of code explanations and output. So for that one, this is the main page of it. It has a bunch of different concepts, say like arrays, slices, et cetera. So you're like, hey, I want to know how do you do arrays and go. So if I go to arrays, which you can't actually see anything here. So yeah, on the left side over here, it gives an explanation of basically what each part of it does. You can see that it's saying you're creating an array to hold five ints, and then on the right, you're creating an array to hold five ints. So it goes through each step of explaining what they do, and then at the very end, there's an example of what happens when you run the code. So you're like, oh hey, there's the zero filled array that it's started in the beginning. So another one I came across is socket loop. Um, this one I came across when I was like, so how do I untar a file? When you're just doing terminal, it's really easy. You just have one command, you untar your file, all done. But in Go, there's a lot more steps that you have to do. You have to open the file, you have to do copies, et cetera. So I was like, I have no idea how to do this. There are way too many functions I have to use. No idea. So for this one, um, on their website, they have a bunch of different tutorials. So unlike the go by example, where it's like, how do I do arrays? This one's like, for instance, secure file deletion with wipe example. It's more specific to use those tasks for it. And then they're also really long code blocks. This is like a little small snippet of how to untar a file. Don't try reading that, it's probably too small. And it's only part of it anyway. So I found that really useful. So outside, there's those different websites, but then there's also blogs. Lots of people in the Go community are writing blogs. Uh, the first blog that I came across is the blog that was written by uh, people who work at Go. It's the GoLang official blog. Um, basically, at every single major release, they put updates as to uh, what's changed, what's new. So you can go look there and say, hey, this is what's new in 1.7, which just came out. Um, the blog that I found the most useful was Dave Cheney's blog. I came across this one when I was trying to figure out a bunch of things for channels. So his website, he updates it super often. Like this one's transistor logic fundamentals. There's lots of great concepts on there. And then he also has resources for new Go programmers, which is super useful as well. And then, so what I was looking for is I was having my channel panic, and I had no idea why, very little knowledge on channels, what's going on, Google it. First thing that comes up is ascend to a closed channel panics. It answered my question, it explains it, it has code details, and then I was able to fix my problem. So there's also Bill Kennedy's blog. Uh, for this one, it's my favorite article there is about using pointers in Go, because a lot of time you're like, do I use pointers, do I not? So there's a great read on that. Um, there's also Gopher Academy. The thing I really like about the Gopher Academy one is that it's written by a bunch of different people, so you can different, get different people's points of views, different people have, a, like some people are beginners, some people have a lot more knowledge, so just a lot to see there. So sure, you've spent some time like looking at example code, or you've been using the tour of Go and writing some code there, but there's also more in-depth training that you can do as well, since the tour of Go just only has a little brief overview of each concept. So there's online training, which is really great because you can do it at your own pace, you can start it, stop it whenever you want, you can repeat things if you forgot something. And so there's Todd McLeod's training, he has a YouTube video, and then he also has a website where it has all of the code there and you can try following along and doing that. And then there's also Pluralsight, usually that costs money, but you can get a trial version if you haven't already done that. And he has a great in-depth training starting from the very basics of Go. So then there's also in-person training. I wish I had been able to attend this a little bit earlier on, but I still got to fairly early. It's great. Um, it's a uh, all-day class. Some of them range from two days to four days, starting also from the very basics. It's um, he also has it, all the code on the internet, so you just pull down the GitHub. If you're in the class, you just follow along, there's a bunch of examples, and then at the end of each topic, there's exercises that you can do. And then since 
there's actually people around, you can ask the people with you, you can ask the instructor or TAs, hey, how do I do this, I'm stuck. So unlike the online training, you actually have, you have everything together one day, but you can get help on it. It's a little harder since you do have to memorize everything that you saw earlier, hopefully. Um, so yeah, um, there's also books. So there's the Go programming language by Donovan and Kernigan. Some of you may have heard of Kernigan. He was the one that wrote the C programming book and one of the authors of C. And then there's also Go in Action by Bill Kennedy, Brian Kettleson, and Eric St. Martin. One of the great things about this book is that there's also a GitHub page. So if you're looking through it, you see some code, you're like, I want to put some print statements in here to see what's actually happening. You can just go to the GitHub and pull it down and follow along with the code on there. So now you have some resources, you have a general idea of how to use Go, but what are you, you need code somewhere, right? Unless you just want to like get up some paper and start handwriting it. I don't do that. So the first thing is the Go Playground. So for this one, it's great if, you're, if you have like a single file or you're like, I want to see what happens if I test this one thing out. And you don't want to just open up an editor and go run through that. So for this one, this is just the first page. You can throw whatever code you want. And you can just hit run. It'll run your code. So that's great for one file. But say if you are trying to do an entire package, you have a bunch of different files, can't really do it over there. So what I use is VS Code with the VS Code Go plugin. And then you can also have the Delve Debugger. And then the thing that I used previously before that was Sublime with Go Sublime. And then lots of people still love Vim. So there's VimGo. And then, of course, there's many other ones that I either haven't used, but like Atom, et cetera. So with all of these packages, like the Go Sublime or with VS Code Go, they have things such as Go Fumpt. So for this one, they actually have it as well in the playground. So it formats your code to the standard format. So say if you're here and you're like, I like having a bunch of tabs just because I feel like it. Um, if you format it, it'll put it right back where it's supposed to be. It auto formats your code. The great thing about this is it solves whether you're using spaces or tabs, because there's a huge debate on that. So they actually use tabs. And I also have format on save set, so then every single time when you save, it'll automatically format everything for you. So another thing is autocomplete. So like when you're in Google, you start typing, and it gives you some examples of what else you can put next. Like this one says, I hate it when I'm studying and a velociraptor throws bananas on me. <laughs> Useful, right? Um, so this is really helpful for learning. So say if you're in here and you're like, all right, so I want to do foomt. And I'm like, what's happening next? So if you do that. It'll give you a bunch of the different functions, methods that you can call on it. Or say you have this vertex, which is V. So you do V dot, it will tell you, hey, this struct has fields X and Y, and I can call abs on it. And this is really useful when you're like, I don't know exactly what's happening here. I'm trying to learn the code, don't know what to do. So another thing is GoDef. So especially when you're new, to, like you have a big code base that you're looking through, and you see some function, and you're like, what does this do? Instead of having to say if it's a package that's already in Go, you don't have to go to Google and be like, what does this do? Or if it's a function that is part of some other code base that they created, perhaps in different packages, you might have the same exact function name, and then you're like, control F, which one is it? Is it this one? Nope, this doesn't look right. It's not calling the right thing. Oh, is it this one? No. So in here, so say if you are looking at phones again, and you're like, what does this do? So in VS Code, you have the option of jumping to the definition, or you can just peek at it. So if you do peek at definition, it tells you, hey, this is what this function does. So another great one is Go imports. So at the beginning of Go files, they expect that you call what all the imports are. So instead of having to manually go and type it in every single time, there's a plugin for Go imports. So say 
I decided, oh, I'm going to delete this line of code. And if you look at the top, you can see FUMT and math. So if I delete this and save it, suddenly it's gone. And the reason it's underlining V is because you never use it. So say if I put it back, and it auto formats it, and FIMT is back in the imports. So you don't have to worry about it, because otherwise, if you run your code, it'll complain saying that it can't find math or whatever um, import you're trying to use because you didn't import it. OK, so now you have editors, you have some background knowledge, but you still you need more coding practice. So. Some, there are many great coding challenge websites out there. They're not all specific to Go, so there's like HackerRank and CodeEval. You can pick if you want to do like Ruby, Python, but you can also pick Go for them. It starts from very basic problems such as like FizzBuzz, going to a lot more advanced concepts, and there's just hundreds of questions out there. And then the Go community also has every month there's a Go challenge that's run by someone in the community, and then you can tr submit your uh, code to that, and then there are prizes for the first few places. So for those, it's just like you have one task, you have one file, you make one problem and solve it. Sometimes you want to do something bigger, like projects. Um, if you've written code in other languages, you can try redoing some of those projects in Go. Or there's a bunch of um, open source projects. There's a GitHub wiki that tells you a bunch of projects out there. It has it broken down by categories, such as like for logging, there's Intel Snap, there's Docker, Kubernetes, a bunch of other things out there. So you can just commit, make a new pull request, submit a little bit of code, just start somewhere simple, maybe add some testing. So if you're new to a project, especially if there's a lot of code, I think the best place to start at is unit testing. That's where I started at because I looked at the code and I was like, I have no idea what's going on at all. There's just so much code here, I can't even just start adding something because I have no idea what's happening already. So start out unit testing because it's just for that one specific file. And then you, afterward, I moved on to integration testing since you're, you're still testing, but it's more broad. And then after you get a better understanding of how the code base works, then you can start actually writing features for it. And then, of course, once you write features, you should write testing for your features because testing is always useful, so just repeat. Always make sure you do testing. So there's also communities, as I mentioned. Um, I wish I knew more about the Go community when I started. My community was basically coworkers, mentors at work. Uh, there's a bunch of different communities, such as the Go for Slack. For this one, I don't know if anyone's on there at the moment, but uh, Go for Slack has a ton of people on there from all over the world with Go. There's general, so you can just start going to any of the different uh, categories. There's one for Golang UK Conf, so if you're on Slack, on Go for Slack, you should join that. There's still the rest of today. So people, there's like one for people that are new, Golang newbies, there's Docker, there's just a wide array of things on there, and people are responding all the time and very eager to help you. Say maybe you don't have someone to ask at work, or you're doing it on your own, or it's 4 a.m., your coworkers are all asleep and don't want to be bothered, just go on here, somebody around the world is going to be on. There's also the GoNuts Google group. So one of the great things about this one is that you, so the Slack, one of the hard things is that if you're type, you're chatting there or you want to know how something works, you have to do like a search on it or it just, it's scrolled up, there's so much stuff, you have no idea what's going on. So for the uh, Golang Nuts, it has a bunch of different forum. It's a forum. There's a bunch of different questions. You can go click on that question, be like, hey, what's this? And you can see all the responses that people might not respond as quickly on there now. So then there's also, so that's online things. And then there's also meetups that you can go to in person. In Oregon, I've gone to the PDX Go meetup. Actually, right before I joined, or like started working on Go, first meetup I went to was for Go. Kelsey Hightower did a talk on Rocket. And then there's also, like lots of places have different ones, some smaller than others. Um, there's GoBridge, which is for underrepresented communities. And then there's Women Who Go, which is for people who are identifying as women. So meetups are a small version of conferences. They're usually a lot smaller. They have fewer people. 
conferences, as you know, you're here, um, have quite a few talks of different topics. Um, there's more people, and you could say if you want to listen, start practicing for talks, you could start at a meetup, and then a great, and then go afterward to a bigger scale for a conference. So many conferences are actually Go specific. So there's GopherCon, which is the biggest Go conference. It's held every year in Colorado. One of the great things about this is, say you can't afford to go, you miss the conference for whatever reason, they post all the videos and the slides online afterwards so you can follow along. Or if you really love to talk, you can go and watch it again. There's also GopherCons in other locations. There's India, Dubai, Brazil. Brazil's coming up in November. And then there's Going UK. As hopefully you all know, big as you're here. Um, there's also Dago, which is going to be in Paris in October, and they also have a bunch of their slides up too. And then there's Gotham Go in November, and of course there's a bunch of other ones. I didn't catch everything. And then some of the image credits, such as the random gopher that was in the beginning, and some of the gopher images as well. So yeah, thanks. Um, and I will be later posting my slides on Twitter. And if anyone has any questions, you can come up and ask me afterward or if you run into me.